we talked about some scenarios. The extreme scenario is this one when we have proved to you that if we don't control the, uh, the rate of transmission from the sender side, if we don't control that rate of transmission, which what we call uh, lambda n, or lambda in dash. If we don't control that, the throughput will look like this eventually, which means that all the nodes, they will start to transmit traffic, but the throughput will, a, will go to zero for all of them. This is a very critical and drastic scenario. So all, the, all these four nodes are sending data to each other but nothing is getting across if we don't have uh, uh, control and regulation to this lambda, right? So, therefore, this is a clear motivation that we need to regulate that traffic with the objective of trying to overwhelm, trying to avoid overwhelming the, the routers. Overwhelming the router means that if we send the traffic too fast, the, the, uh, uh, the buffers inside these routers will get full and they will start to drop the packets. Uh, so we need to regulate this lambda in to avoid this scenario. However, the problem is that at the transport level, we have no uh, 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 visibility to the router buffers. We have no direct visibility. So we talked about... Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So last time we started to talk about the, uh, the TCP protocol. Uh, and we have uh, talked about uh, the characteristics of uh, how uh, TCP performs flow control and error control. And, uh, and also we started to talk about uh, congestion control. Uh, for congestion control, we talked about the principles of congestion control, and we said that um, two possible scenarios or two possible categories for uh, providing congestion control. One is end-to-end, -end, which we called it a implicit. Implicit means we do not have any visibility. We have zero visibility about the network and the buffers inside the routers. We don't have any direct indication whether the, buff, the, the, the buffer at the router is overwhelmed or not. Meshi? We don't have any information that the traffic is jammed in the network. We don't have this. But somehow we have to make certain assumptions. Okay? When to regulate the traffic that is going in. And that's, that's what TCP does. TCP provides end-to-end -end congestion control. Is there any other alternative? Yes. Here, we talk about explicit. Explicit here means that the network will give me an indication, a clear indication that there is some traffic jam. Okay? So the router, whenever a router drops a packet because the buffer is full, this router will send me back an explicit indication that there is a network jam. If I can have this explicit indication, then the problem is easier because I'm 100% sure that the, the, the network is congested, okay? And all I need to do is just to regulate the, the, uh, the lambda end, regulate the traffic. We'll see how we regulate the traffic. It's, it's, it's relatively easy. Okay, but there is also some, yani, uh, 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 some intelligence or some, some approaches to how you reduce the traffic. But keep in mind that the highway can get jammed very easily, right? But it takes time to clear out this jam. Sah? Yani, this is hatta, it happens in real life, sah? If we are going through Shamal Road, you can easily get traffic jams. But once you have some traffic jams, you spend a lot of time to clear that jam. You can easily get traffic jams, right? But it takes some time to clear this out. So with the explicit congestion control, 
we get some clear indication and we mentioned some clear example last time which we have studied in network one even though nobody remembered it which is a explicit congestion notification we said that there is an explicit field in the IP header which we have studied supposedly in network one it has a, a, um, a field called differentiated services right Okay. This differentiated services is actually subdivided into two subfields. One is called differentiated service code point. صح? The other one is called explicit congestion notification. Explicit congestion notification is the one that we're, we're interested in. This may get sent from the router back to the source. The bar of source and name. Bar of name. Source. Mm. لا يعني now the router needs to send okay uh, uh, explicit congestion notification send it to who router عنده access to right level 3 فيقدر يشوف ال IP address بتاع ال بتاع ايوه بتاع السندر بتاع السندر اللي هو which one بقى the one that sent the packet that I had to drop ماشي so if I if I ever have to drop a packet because the buffer is full I can easily, before throwing this packet, I can easily read صح, the source IP address and send explicit condition notification back to that source. Seems systematic. However, on the internet, it's not done. And this functionality is, has never uh, uh, been used in, in the internet. And today we'll learn why. Why was this never implemented in the internet? Okay? So that's why TCP does not actually use any kind of explicit congestion notification. It does not support that. So, uh, so IP uses explicit congestion. However, it's not, it's not being used in the internet. Similarly, some other protocols like ATM. ATM was one of the uh, network layer protocols. We will take some idea about ATM in, in the network layer when we start to talk about network, uh, network layer. However, this kind of standards is obsolete. Nobody uses it. So all the, all the network layer protocols have lost ground to IP. Even though, even though IP, as we studied in network one, is very simple, is unreliable, is best effort, is... So it seems to be very simple. And ATM is actually very sophisticated. Imagine. So why uh, all these uh, protocols, they lost ground to IP? We'll talk about that uh, as well today in, in the network layer. Imagine. So in that case, if we have explicit congestion notification, we can have explicit rate sender because, because then we can, we can even communicate similar to what TCP does for a flow control the router may actually send some, uh, 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 the room of the buffer in the router back to the source if we want. In, in which case, we can also have some explicit regulation to the lambda. All of this is not done. <laughs> yeah, it seems possible, but they don't do it. They don't do it. And, and tell me. So what TCP does is that it uses end-to-end -end congestion control, which means that TCP needs to make certain assumptions whether the, the network is jammed or not. So how does it do that? How does it do that? Hmm? Huh? Hmm? Delay? Actually, do, do I have, do, do I يعني, have 100% guarantee that the package is dropped? لا, إيه الindications اللي عندي as TCP? If I ever have to retransmit due to what? Time out? أيوة, الله ينور عليك, يا سلام عليك, يا سلام عليك, مين مين. يبقى I have, I have two events that happen in TCP, which indicates to me that maybe, maybe there is a packet drop. Okay? لما هي تايم اوت والثري دوبليكت اكس ثري دوبليكت اكس ذي هابن وين ذي هابن معناها ايه؟ 
And if there is a possibility that there is some packet drop. Okay? So those are the two events. Type. Do these events mean that 100% there is a packet drop? As we said, no. No. And? Or not, uh, for, for example, for timeout, maybe the timeout is premature. Maybe the timeout is too short. And after we started to retransmit, the packet got delayed and it, it actually arrived. Acknowledgement. The acknowledgement got delayed, but it, it arrived back to the center. I hope. Kalimna on the scenario. This is the sender, this is the receiver, okay? Sender sent the packet, okay? It's waiting for acknowledgement to come. However, prematurely here, there is a timeout. While the timeout estimation was incorrect, was yani inaccurate. So here, I will have to retransmit again, and, re and retransmission, معنى, any timeout, in Israeli, معنى, eh, packet was dropped. Suppose the packet actually dropped, no, but the acknowledgement got delayed. But I got, I have to make a decision, and I decided that the packet was dropped. So here, as we will talk about today, here, I will decide to regulate the speed to avoid all overwhelming the network, even though the, the network did not lose the packet. This is by the E, the cost of, of doing the congestion end to end without relying on explicit congestion information. That's the cause, that your decision may not be accurate. Okay? What are any questions? Taib. So today, I will we'll talk about the details. How TCP performs congestion control? What, what are the parameters that TCP uses to perform congestion control? How does it regulate the speed? It seems that I have to reduce and increase the rate somehow, صح? So reduce it to how much, increase it how much, ماشي? When an event happened like, TC, like timeout, what do I do? When an event happened like, for example, three duplicate acts, what do I do? Are they similar or not similar? Okay, so these are the questions that we need to answer today. ماشي كده? طيب. So, now we'll talk about TCP congestion. So we talked about the principles of congestion control. Okay, now we need to, eat, to use these principles to analyze how TCP performs that congestion control. So the approach that TCP uses is to increase the transmission rate. Okay, for us, increase the transmission rate, as we said, and as we talked about pipeline protocols, right? We said that by increasing the window, we technically increase the A the rate of transmission, صح? So that's the way the TCP uses to start increasing the transmission rate gradually, is by increasing the, the window size. ماشي? So technically we can start from window size of one, which means that TCP always starts from stop and wait. صح? Between stop and wait, we send one packet only and we wait for the acknowledgement. When we get the acknowledgement, we can move on. Okay? Here, when we, when we get the acknowledgement back, we get an indication that everything is going fine. So I will increase the window size. Meshi? So this is a way to, a, to gradually start to increase the, uh, the rate of transmission. At any point of time, at any point of time. So this is the sender. This is the receiver. I sent one packet. So I used the channel for this for this much time, right? And the acknowledgement came like after full round trip time. Okay? So what is the rate of transmission? The rate of transmission is the length of the packet, or basically يعني, the, the window size. I will window size in bytes, صح? divided by the round trip time. So this is basically the rate of transmission at any point of time. So if I have two packets, the window size is two packets in terms of bytes divided by the round trip time. Three packets and so on. So this is the rate of transmission. So by te by technically by increasing the window size gradually, I increase the rate of transmission. What? Sahel. 
طيب how 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 does بقى TCP perform this Okay. So how how does TCP bar perform this? So this is the window size. Naji. And remember, we have we have talked about the window size that the window size is actually regulated by the receiver. Remember, on a on a in the receiver they send me back the package called receiver window. I have something called receiver window. Okay, this is a parameter that the receiver sends me back with every single segment. صح؟ كان موجودة في ال في ال header of TCP. Okay. So this receiver window is the one that that gets sent back from the receiver back to the sender. Okay. However, the sender uses another parameter called a Send window. أو ب أو بعض الأحيان بيسموها في عندنا حاجة اسمها congestion window, right? So this send window is the current window size that TCP uses, okay? Which has something to do with the receiver window, but it's not necessarily the same. زي ما قلنا عشان because of because of the congestion avoidance. TCP starts from one packet only, a size of one packet. Meshi? So it sets the sender window to one, regardless of whatever the receiver window is. Meshi? At the beginning. And then I start to increase, increase, increase. At any point of time, this send window is actually the minimum of two things. The send window and the receiver window. ماشي كده؟ So this send window is calculated based on how I increase the window size gradually. ماشي؟ But at any point of time, I cannot increase more than the receiver window. So when I say send window here, send window at time t. So at every at every point of time, I can increase the send window. وحنشوف دلوقتي يعني ازاي بنكريز it. ماشي؟ And then I cannot by any means hit the receiver window. Once I reach to the receiver window, I have to stop. Maybe that's how I combine congestion control with flow control. If I could, I avoid overwhelming both the 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 receiver and the and the and the network both. What what what? Here, maybe by doing this, I can avoid overwhelming both the receiver and the network. Maybe. Okay. So TCP. Does that through what we call? It's an approach. What what we call a additive increase, multiplicative decrease. Additive decrease means additive increase means I I increase the window size gradually and linearly. Maybe, and then multiplicative decrease. Why? Why be a multiplicative decrease? Why do you think? We do additive increase, but multiply. Multiplicative means يعني I have to drop drastically. Why do you think this is happening? To retain the communication connection, which is the result of the quick response allows for more communication. Aiyah. At the same time, I can again recalculate by additive. بعد اللوس ارجع تاني اريكالكوليت وازود واحده واحده واشوف يعني لا هو احنا قلنا ايه؟ احنا قلنا اتس ايزي تو كوز ترافيك جام بس اتس هاردر تو ايه؟ تو كلير ذات ترافيك جام صح؟ اف ذير از اني ديسيجن ذات ذا نتورك از كونجستد اوكي؟ اي هاف تو ريسبوند فيري كويكلي از يو سيد بس اولسو اي هاف تو جيف A long time for the traffic jams to clear out. That's why I have to drop drastically and then go slowly again. Why? Because if if a router has a buffer that's full, 
okay, it will start drop all the packets. So I have to slow down drastically until the buffer clears out. And the buffer clears out slowly. Okay, so I have to slow down until the buffer clears out everything in the buffer and then I'll start increase gradually again. Wadah? <coughs> Clear? So that's why I have to increase additively but decrease exponentially. So the assumption here is that at these tipping points I'm assuming there is some a network jam. At these tipping points, I'm assuming. Again, I'm assuming manae, not necessarily this is true. I'm assuming that there is traffic jam, but because I do end-to-end -end congestion control, this may not be true. But I just have to make an assumption and move with it. Mexico? Type. So the, the, the increase is that we have this congestion window, again, which is similar to the send window, Meiji, and we start from one maximum segment size, one MSS, one, just one, assuming that the segment has a, a specific number of bytes, fixed, Meiji. So we start from one, okay, and then we keep increasing, Meiji, in gradual. Then once there is uh, a, a decision that there is tra some traffic jam, we cut this window by half, drastically. Maybe. So we'll see that in a, in a, we'll see that in a way why we cut it by half. We'll see that later why we cut it by half. This will achieve an objective that we will talk about. Keep this in mind. This will achieve an objective that we will talk about in few minutes. Maybe. How TCP uh, uh, does it? As we said, at any point of time, we can calculate the rate, the congestion window, divided by the round trip time in terms of bytes per second. And this will give us the rate at any point of time. Okay? So by increasing the congestion window, we technically increase the rate. Sahla. La, 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 I send as many number of packets as I want, okay? But I don't send again until I get the acknowledgement, right? So this is the actual rate, okay? The utilization is not, it's not necessarily optimal, but this is the transmission rate. So we have some gaps here, which, which lowers the utilization of the channel, but in terms of transmission rate, this is the average, average transmission rate, manay. معناها the number of transmitted bytes per second. ماشي. واضح ها؟ في حد عنده أي لبس؟ ماشي. طيب. So, so at any point of time, طبعا, the 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 last byte sent اللي هو هنا minus the last acknowledged uh, acknowledged uh, uh, byte. This is the window size, yeah. This is basically the window size. And this is the transmission uh, uh, rate. Now, but unlike flow control, flow control uses the same receiver window, as we said. But here, congestion window is dynamic. Goes up and down in real time. Okay? Type. Zaman al TCP has two indications for possible traffic jam. For possible traffic jam. Lohma e timeout. We... Three duplicate acts. Is there a difference between them? Yes. There is a big difference. Eva a difference. For scenario one, lower three duplicate acts. On the sender. And here the receiver. The sender sends the first packet and then sends the second packet so when the sender sends packet zero okay and then sends packet one after some time the sender received the acknowledgement and the acknowledgement here would have a one right 
Okay. So this packet Zamona was lost. Okay. TCP will not know this, will not make the decision that this packet is lost and it has to be retransmitted until it either has the timeout or if there is packet 2 was sent, what would be the acknowledgement here? One. 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 And this is the first duplicate hack. First one. Okay? And here, packet 3 was sent. What would be the acknowledgement? One. This is the second duplicate hack. And until then, TCP would not decide that packet 1 was lost. Imta, Imta will decide when Hena, I see, I, I sent packet four. The acknowledgement here would be one, صح? And this is the third duplicate act. Only then TCP will decide that packet one was lost. وانا ليه المرة الفين? Because IP is unreliable and these packets might have a arrived not in order. Okay, we talked about that scenario last time, صح? Okay, so the three duplicate acts, if you look at this scenario, the three duplicate acts indicates that packet one was lost, but packet two, packet three got through. Okay, صح? طيب, scenario تاني, three, uh, sorry, lower timeout. For timeout, I have the sender and I have the receiver, okay? And then I send packet zero, I send packet one, I send packet two and so on. And then I have a timeout here, which means I did not receive any acknowledgement until the timeout expires. Which one is more drastic, you think? Which one is more critical? Timeout. The timeout is more drastic, طبعاً. صح? Because I did not receive a single acknowledgement from the network, okay, until the timeout expires. So for me, this is drastic. The network is really congested. There's no response from the network at all. But here, there is some response. صح? And the acknowledgement was sent back because of the fact that packet 2 arrived. Okay, but معناها there are some packets getting through. It's just that one packet was lost. So the two scenarios are not similar. واضح? Two scenarios are not similar, and that's why TCP makes some differentiation between these two indications. ماشي? So the last event is caused by timeout or three duplicate acts. So TCP reduces the rate after any loss, whether this or this. But we'll see back that there is some slight difference when it gets a timeout versus three duplicate acts. There is some slight difference. For both of them, it has to reduce. Okay? But there is some slight difference between the two. Imagine. So there are some, uh, 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 some three mechanisms that we will talk about. One is called AIMD, low additive increase, multiplicative decrease. Maybe. We have the slow start. We have the concept of flow of slow start. As we said at the beginning, we start slow. صح? We increase gradually. But we will see slow مش معناها actually very, very slow. لا. We will see that TCP actually picks up very fast. Even though it's called slow start, it's slow because we started from a low number. But we have to build up gradually. We have to build up very fast, as we will see. Okay? And then we have to be conservative, very conservative, when we get a timeout or when we get three duplicate acts. So we'll see from this time. So what TCP does is that when a connection begins, we increase the rate exponentially. Even though it's called slow start, but actually what happens is that we increase the congestion window by one for every single acknowledgement we receive. For every single acknowledgement we receive. 
So here, for example, as we said, we always start from a congestion window of one, always, one MSS, okay? So we send one packet, we wait for acknowledgement. Once we get the acknowledgement, the congestion window at two. So we send two, okay? Then we are expecting to receive two acknowledgements. So for each of these acknowledgements, we increase by one. So here, the congestion window becomes three, صح? and here it becomes four. So here it becomes three, and here it becomes four. Okay? So for each acknowledgement, I increase by one, but technically for each round trip, I double. صح? For each round trip time, for each complete round trip time, effectively, I double the congestion window. لا هي 2n 2n مش 2 to the power n يفرق يفرق 2n يعني كل مرة بقى ايه كل round trip I double كل round trip I double فأول مرة كانت واحد after one round trip بقت اثنين after complete round trip time بقت اربعة ماشي and then 8 and then 60 and so on واضح so that's why it's called slow start, but it's not actually very slow. It's slow because we started from one. Okay? But it's, it's not like a, a, a slow increase. La, we increase by one for every single acknowledgement we receive. So technically, we start to, to, to build up very fast. Meshi? So initial rate is, is slow, but it ramps up exponentially fast. That's why it's called slow start, but was less misleading. We say slow start, but it's not actually slow increase. It's actually it's it's uh, exponential increase. Meshi. So now, ba, to infer the loss, to take a decision that there is a, a, a some a packet loss, or uh, technically, يعني, there is some uh, يعني, possible traffic jam. We have three duplicate acts, as we said, and we have the timeout. So after three duplicate acts, the congestion window is cut in half. So when the window grows, it grows linearly. We call this congestion avoidant phase. So isn't when we, when, we, when we receive three duplicate acts, we don't drop back to one. We drop to a to half, okay? And we call this the congestion avoidance phase. After a timeout, this is extremely drastic. So we'll drop back to one and we'll start the, the slow start again. And again, we said that what, what is the reason for this? Since we got to the timeout and we're not receiving any indications from the network, it seems that there is huge traffic jam in the network and I better start from scratch to give more time for the network to clear all the router buffers. So the congestion window will, uh, will go instead to one, nergatani, and the window then grows exponentially. Okay? But there is a slight difference here. Bro. Once we reach to the, uh, 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 there is, there is slight difference here between the slow start and the congestion avoidance phase. For the slow start, you increase exponentially. So after receiving one acknowledgement, one acknowledgement, we increase by one. So technically for each round trip time, we double. So this is the slow start. Once we reach to the threshold where the half window size is, we start the congestion phase. In the congestion phase, بقى, يعني معناها إيه؟ معناها we are reaching to the limits of the network. We are getting close to the limits of the network. So I have to be extremely careful. So in that phase, the congestion window, is, the congestion phase, the congestion avoidance phase, we increase the window by one for every round trip time. We don't double that. We do not double in that case. ماشي؟ That's how it looks like. This is the curve. ده على فكرة extremely important. 
extremely important. ماهي هو كل ال congestion control موجود كله في ال إيه في ال في ال in this in this slide يعني. ماشي. طيب so definitely when we start we start from a congestion window of one. And this is the round trip time. This is مش مش one أكنا أخذ بالي. This is the one round trip time, one full round trip time. So here, after one round trip time, the congestion window is one. After two round trip time, the congestion window is two. After three, it's four. At four, it's eight, and then and so on. ماشي. So this is what we call by the threshold. This threshold. It, it actually divides the phases between the slow start. This is the, the slow start. Okay? And that's why this is called the slow start threshold. And this is what we call congestion avoidance phase. Imagine? This is the difference between the two. As you can see, in the slow start, we build up very fast exponentially. Once we reach to the end of the slow start phase, and we get to the congestion avoidance phase. So we see that after each round trip time, we increase only by one. So it becomes linear. Mashi? Why? Because the assumption here is that in this congestion avoidance phase, we are getting close to the A, to the limits of the network. So we better be careful and increase, yani, increase with care. Yani. ماشي uh, any questions so i can i can actually ask you tons of questions in this curve by the way as simple as it looks yeah ماشي so uh, so what is what is what is the rate at any point of time what is the transmission rate at any point of time it's actually the, the window size divided by the round trip time. Round trip time is a is is fixed. And the segment size is fixed. Okay? So at any point of time the transmission rate is the size of the congestion window, which is from here directly, divided by the round trip time, lower fixed. So this is the transmission uh, rate. Okay? How can we? Ah, the threshold. Yes, yes. So, when 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 I have a decision for loss packet, obviously here there is a decision. So, we're not sure whether this is caused by three duplicate acts or timeout. Okay, but actually we can we we will know now. Nashi. So whenever I have a packet loss here, this indicates that there is some possible traffic jam in the network. So in that case, what I do is that here at this point, I set the slow start threshold to half the current congestion window. Okay? So I can ask you, what is the, the slow start threshold at this point? What is it? So here, it, the current congestion window was a 12. So what is the, 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 the slow start threshold? Six. Six. Hey, it's set as six. Now, there is, there are two variations of TCP. Actually, there are three common ones, but here there are only two. Uh, in assignment three, inshallah, we'll have another third one, ماشي? But uh, here we'll talk about only two. So there is TCP Tahoe and TCP Reno. TCP Tahoe, both of them are compliant with the standard, by the way. ماشي? TCP Reno, what it does is that regardless of the indication of, uh, uh, of packet loss, it drops back to one and then it it goes back to the slow start regardless. Mashi? TCP Reno differentiates. 
disappearing different sheets. If it's time out, it goes back to one. If it's three duplicate acts, it goes directly to the congestion avoidance phase. Meshi? That's the slight difference. So it seems that the decision, the decision here was based on do three duplicate acts or timeout. So here, the decision was the packet loss was because of the three duplicate acts or the timeout? Timeout. Uh, timeout means that TCP Reno will go back to one. Both of them, they will go back to one. Both of them. Okay? But here, TCP oh, Reno did not go back to one. So this indicates that the time, the, sorry, the, the packet loss was because of the three duplicate acts, not because of the time. Because TCP Reno here returned back to half the window and, and it started right away the congestion avoidance. Because for TCP Reno, if it's time out, it will go back to one regardless. Both of them, they will go back to one regardless. Only TCP Reno differentiates between the two indications. That's actually a good question. That's actually a, a good question. We are at the beginning of the communication, so how well, how come the, the, the slow start threshold was at a certain value? In fact, at the beginning of the communication, the slow start threshold is by default zero. So this here indicates that there was some something before this curve. There was some communication before this curve, and the last, last word was at a congestion window of Kemba, can you tell? 16, bravo Alec. yes. Bravo Alec. yes. So at the beginning of the communication, we, we initialize all the parameters. We don't back the congestion window and the slow start threshold. Slow start threshold is by default zero. Maybe? So I go slow start, I go slow start, I don't have packet loss. I don't have packet loss, okay? Then I see back. In all cases, I have to set the slow start threshold to A to half, the current value, على طول. ماشي? And then I have to decide, if I'm TCP Reno, أسأل نفسي بقى, if the, 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 the packet loss was due to three duplicate acts, then go directly to the congestion avoidance phase, which means set the congestion window to SS threshold. Okay? Otherwise, set the congestion window to one. But in all cases, the S threshold will be will be set to half the window. Why? Ashan, when I start, when I start for, for the, the the slow start, I have to uh, switch to the congestion avoidance when I reach the, the SS threshold. So in all cases, whenever I have any packet loss, first thing I do set the SS threshold to half the uh, half the window size. على طول. And then as an example, when I TCP Reno. Was it caused by do three duplicate acts? خلاص, the congestion window equals to the S threshold. Otherwise, set it to one. When I set it to one, I go to the slow start phase, and then once I reach to the SS threshold, I switch to the congestion avoidance. The only difference is whether to increase the congestion window by one when I receive one acknowledgement, or I increase it by one when the whole round trip time passes. Meshi? حبوا نكتب الكود مثلا نكتب الكود بتاع ال... يعني ذا 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 اكشلي ذا سودو كود فور فور ذيس از ذات فيرست ذا كونجشن ويندو مثلا ليت سي كونجشن ويندو از مثلا ليت سي اكس ماشي اند ناو اي هاف ان ايفنت ذيس ايفنت از لايك ايذر ثري دوبليكيت اكس اور ا تايم اوت the congestion window is X, so SS threshold equals to X divided by 2. على طول. Okay? And then if the event طبعا دا TCP رينو بقى. If the event equals to 3 duplicate acts 
ماشي كونجشن ويندو جديده يعني ايكوالز تو اس اس فريش ايلس كونجشن ويندو ايكوالز تو 1 ذس از فور تي سي بي ريم اوكي تاهو ذا اونلي ذا اونلي ديفرنس از ذات اي ويل نوت هاف ذس اف ستيت اي ويل سيت ذا اي ذا كونجشن ويندو تو 1 ريجاردس خلاص ذاتس ات ويل بي ايزي ماشي So how many? Yeah, I mean, for example, I will say, how how many packets were sent up to this level? How many segments were sent at this point? At round trip seven. Huh? Seven? No. No. اه اتس اتس لايك ا جيومتريك سيريز اصلا يعني 1 بلس 2 بلس 4 بلس 8 بلس 7 بلس بلس سوري 8 بلس 9 بلس 10 اند سو اون يو هاف تو جيت اول ذس سمشن تو نو هاو ماني سيجمنتس وير سنت اب تو ذس ليفل ماشي Up to up to here is fine. Okay. في بقى very very يعني important question. If I have if I have two nodes like this, and they have two TCP sessions that share that share particular link on in the network. ماشي. And they both use TCP. And TCP uses congestion control as we have just explained it. The question is: Is congestion control done by TCP? Okay. Uh, 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 does it actually guarantee fairness or not? Does it actually guarantee fairness or not? يعني fairness يعني معناها إحنا قلنا دلوقتي لما نزود لامدا إن gradually for both of them. Okay. Ideally, each one of them will have R over two. Lay R, lay the capacity of the link over two. صح? That's natural because both of them they will increase gradually, similar to each other. Lambda in here is equal to lambda in here. So technically or statistically, at the router level, they will share the buffer equally. صح? Because they are increasing with the same rate. So the logic says that they will share, each one of them will share half the buffer, which means that technically they will reach to R over two. So each of them, each of them will reach to R over two, which is technically fair. But that's not what TCP does. What TCP does is additive increase, multiplicative decrease. صح؟ يعني ممكن واحد يزود والتاني يقل يعني. Will that Really, still maintain fairness. Let's see. That. <laughs> Don't jump into conclusion type. Let's see. لا هو خد بالك يعني هو technically when there is some traffic jam, when there is some traffic jam, okay. يعني the assumption is both of them they will feel it maybe at different times maybe at different times but both of them they will feel it definitely ماشي so maybe some, one, but, but the problem here is that maybe one of them will be in the congestion avoidance phase but the other one is in the slow start phase because there, there is some time difference صح So increasing and decreasing the rates like this, the tariqa di, will that really provide fairness? The answer is yes, actually. TCP provides fairness. خيال بقى. TCP provides fairness. Even though بقى كل ال 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 up and downs اللي احنا شايفينها دي, but it does provide fairness. تعال نشوف ازاي بقى الكلام ده. تعال نشوف ازاي بقى الكلام ده. So basically, if there is 
if there is like K connections that are sharing a link, ideally, fairness is achieved by having the effective rate for each of these connections equal to E R over K. If that happens, then if that happens, then this mechanism is absolutely fair. Imagine. So to answer this question, let's assume. Again, we'll make certain assumptions to simplify because يعني, to talk about it in practical scenarios is very, very hard. But we have to make certain assumptions to simplify and talk about a simplified scenario where I will prove to you that TCP is indeed fair. Maybe? Then if we need to talk about more complicated scenarios, then we can simulate and, and, and also make sure that it's fair. But technically, it's proven to be fair. It's technically proven to be fair. Type. To, to talk about this simplified scenario, we will assume that we have these two connections. Connection one and connection two. As two connections best, Maybe? just to make it simple. So each of them will have different traits according to the congestion control technique that we have. صح? One. So for connection uh, one, the rate is R1. And for connection two, the rate is R2. At this point, at this point, are they equal? No. Is that fair? No. So for this initial stage, they are not fair. Okay? But we'll see that performing the congestion control will lead to fairness. Type. So, if we want to make sure that they are fair, we need to get close to this line. This line, المعادلة بتاعت line ده, is a y equal to x, صح? Which means that R1 will get close to R2. So, we want to get at close as possible, as close as possible to this line. ماشي؟ لو y equal x. واضح كده؟ طيب. What is this line? This line, this line, المعادلة بتاع this line يعني is a, is R1 plus R2 equal to the big R. اللي هو the, the, the actual limit of the route, the actual limit of the A. The bandwidth of the shared link. Okay? So this is the x plus y equal to r. Imagine? So the idea, what is the ideal point? At r. صح? At r. يعني basically the, uh, the, the ultimate or the optimal point is this. صح? When R1 equals to R2 equals to R over 2. صح? This is the A, the optimal point that I need to reach. So what we should try to discuss or what we should try to prove here is that the congestion control technique will always try to keep the two connections to get close to this point. So we started from a point that's clearly not fair. R1 does not equal to R2. So from this point, we will get to the slow start. So the slow start will technically mean that they will both increase يعني, more or less equally. Shankela, this line is parallel to this. They will reach with the same, they will, sorry, they will, they will increase with the same rate. But again, not that they are equal, they are not equal. But they will both increase with the same rate. Meshi? Until they get past the, the limit of the link, 
so they will get after the the the, the limit of the of the router. So here there is some packet loss. Here we talk about the ideal case that both of them they will feel it at the same time. But even if there is some delta time, you know, R1 felt it before R2, it, it will not make a big difference. Yeah. But here there is technically some event that will be felt by both of them, either at the exact same time or with delta time in between. How about the key here? No, both of them they will try. To set the rate to half, صح؟ هو هنا بقى هنا بقى اللي عشان كده إحنا قلنا بقى إيه keep in mind why half because half of a big number معناها you reduce okay bigger amount and half of a small number you reduce with a small amount so you see here that R one becomes the R here divided by two, okay? And here, R two becomes R divided by two. So R one was bigger, so it will drop bigger amount. So they will reach to here, okay? And then they will keep increasing with the same rate. Whenever there is a packet loss, okay, both of them they will drop to half. So see what we are getting through. So what we are trying to do now is we are getting close and close to a to R one equals to R two. What Hadi? Visually, visually, kid. عشان كده إحنا we drop to half. Why? Because if you are uh, uh, R divided by two, this actually, يعني, it, it, in in some way achieves this fairness. Because if the rate is high, you drop. Have the high rate, which is high, so you lose a higher amount, okay? And if it's small, you lose lower amount. So what we are trying to do is that each one will try to drop proportionally, so that they will both get. يعني إنت if you try كده start from two different numbers and keep dropping them by half, eventually they will reach to the same number. ماشي So that's what we're trying to do here. So what we're trying to do is to get them close to a R1 equals to R2, close to that line. Maybe. So this is visually done by a simplistic scenario. However, in practice, it, 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 the same thing happens. So you can prove it empirically, actually. You can improve it using simulations. Very easy. But this is the idea behind it. Maybe. Type. Uh, very important, but. Here, TCP achieves fairness. We agree, صح? Per إيه بقى? Per connection. So TCP achieves fairness per connection. ماشي? ليه بقى الجملة التانية دي بقى per connection? Because this is important actually. So again, TCP achieves fairness per connection. طيب. بالنسبة لل UDP, does the UDP actually guarantee fairness? UDP أصلا ده يعني مش أي حاجة هو multiplexing and multiplexing that's it it بس إيه it guarantees بس إيه conversation between the end applications that's it does not perform flow control does not perform a congestion control ولا reliability ولا أي حاجة ماشي but it's it's very attractive for multimedia applications so why is it attractive for multimedia applications because the other alternative TCP as we said TCP Uh, with the 100% reliability, it actually uh, uh, reflects all the packet lo loss to a to delays, very large delays, right? So if I'm if I'm watching, uh, a game, مثلا ولا حاجة on on YouTube, and and we use UDP, if there is any packet loss, our networks nowadays are good. That's why we watch YouTube videos with with good clarity. However, if there is some traffic jam. What will happen is that I will keep retransmitting, 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 retransmitting the same packet, and that causes long delays, right? So UDP is attractive in that sense because UDP does not provide reliability, ماشي? but also it does not provide flow control and congestion control. So for multimedia applications, they tend to use UDP, but 
they have to use a combined protocol to provide flow control and congestion control. So UDP for multimedia applications is good, but it's not enough. Imagine? Because for, for multimedia applications, we actually we don't need reliability. We don't want to have 100% reliability because this will slow us down. And at the same time, if you're watching a high definition video and there is some pixels that are not uh, visible, you will not notice it, Aslan, right? But uh, 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 TCP will be persistent and will try to retransmit, and this will slow you down. Okay? So it's better in that case to, uh, to tolerate a little bit of loss, but we cannot tolerate flow control and congestion control. So that's why they use UD, uh, UDP with some other protocols like RTP, RTSP, Meiji. These are some protocols that get combined with UDP. We did not study these protocols, obviously. Uh, but these protocols, they, they work hand in hand with UDP to provide congestion control and flow control. Meiji. So, so UDP plus RTP is better than TCP. Meiji. Is, is more efficient compared to TCP, at least for certain types of applications like real-time multimedia. Okay. So this is fairness for UDP. UDP is not fair, but if you want to make it, if you want to make it a little bit fair, then you have to use another combined protocol like RTP, RTSP, or something like this. Type okay. for TCP. Uh, TCP is, is, is fair, as we have proved to you, but pair connection. If you have two connections on two separate hosts sharing a medium, they will, uh, they, they will have share, uh, 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 they will have fair share of this link. But some, uh, some applications, they try to abuse this feature in TCP. An example is all the peer-to-peer -peer applications. They have a feature, layal bit torrent will gonna tell will. Have you heard about it? They have peer-to-peer -peer applications like gonna bit torrent. Akid, yani everybody heard about it. Mahatsh, Saman. Ah, well, it's still good, but yani, he was using it a little bit. But he technically still not good, yani. Uh, a peer-to-peer -peer architecture talks about the fact that a data is not centralized in one host and everybody connects client-server. Peer-to-peer means that data is spread all over the internet and I can use some BitTorrent or something like this to get to the data which exists maybe on one مثلاً, node in China or, or, or Canada or something like this. Maybe. Directly, peer-to-peer, -peer, without having a big server that hosts all the data. So uh, for, for peer to peer applications or many applications, what they do uh, is that if yeah, you can be smart and say, okay, so I have this is one app which talks to another app. This is sender and this is receiver. Imagine. So imagine if, if I have one TCP connection with this app, and there is, like, let's assume that there is a network in between. And then there is another, another app here, which uses another TCP connection with the same app or different app, doesn't matter. But it shares the same network. This is the key. And there is another app, another app. Let's say there is, like, N apps like this. And the network has R. Okay. Let's say this, these are 10, just to make it simple. These are 10 apps. And this are, what is the technical or effective throughput for each of these connections? So here what you will achieve is, there is definitely R over 10, صح? But now, this application is very smart. So it made like, 10 more
connections huh? with the same destination. So technically here I have 11 connections. ماشي. What is the rate per connection? It's now R over 20, صح? What is the technical rate for this host? It got actually 11 R over 20. ماشي. So one of the applications may try to abuse the fairness of TCP and establish multiple connections at the same time. Because of the fact that TCP will achieve this fairness per connection. It assumes that each connection is independent. Whether it's coming from the same host or different host, I don't care. Okay? So I may try to be smart and establish multiple connections from the same app to the same destination. And that's what many of the peer-to-peer -peer applications, they do that. One of the features is that you can configure your uh, uh, peer software configuration to have up to, for example, 20 connections for the same movie you download. So it tries to establish 20 different TCP connections to download the same movie, whether to the same destination or to different destinations. Because the, the same movie may exist in different, in different nodes, one in China, one in Canada. So, and it's very smart. It actually downloads part of the movie from this one and part of the movie from this one. And it has 20 connections at the same time. So the movie gets downloaded very, very fast. Okay? What made it actually disappear is not this, because it, it was very attractive to people at the beginning. But the problem is... They started to put viruses everywhere. So this is a way for you to download viruses like crazy. I mean. So people stop to trust any content that comes from peers. Because if you, are, if you are connected to one server, this server is, is actually trusted and it's authentic and everybody connects to it. So you can easily uh, uh, guarantee the, the authenticity of that server. But if you are downloading from 100 different locations, and you don't know these locations. So uh, if one of them uh, gives you like a virus as part of the content, so you can spread the viruses uh, uh, very fast on the internet. And that's what actually made people not attracted to use these services anymore. Okay, so TCP performs fairness pair connection. So we have to eat to be uh, uh, careful that if one application establishes multiple connections, they can try to tap into the band. يعني بيقولوا إيه بالعربي كده he eats the bandwidth of the of the network by establishing multiple connections of TCP. You can do that, and that's a drawback. But at least أحسن من UDP. UDP does not perform any. تمام كده. So any any questions so far? So that's how TCP performs congestion control. And the good thing is that by additive decrease and multiplicative decrease and this type of approach, we uh, uh, were able to reach to the uh, uh, limits of the network. Uh, we were able to avoid congestion. And we also guarantee fairness, at least per connection. Meji? Any questions so far? So that's, that's, that's the chapter three. So we finished uh, chapter three. So we talked about transport layer protocols from the beginning that we have the basic functionality of any transport layer protocol starting from multiplexing and demultiplexing. We uh, talked about reliability. We talked about the principles of providing reliability, making certain assumptions, and then trying to relax these assumptions to reach to a, a more practical scenario where we have Uh, uh, some realistic scenario where packet drops happen either at the sender side or for the acknowledgement and so on. We talked about the analysis of each of these uh, scenarios. We use finite state machine, remember? We, we talked about finite state machine to analyze this and then we have talked about how to provide uh, uh, these reliable services for TCP. We talked about the fact that TCP uses a combination of uh, go back in and selective repeat. It does not actually use one of them, it actually mixes between them. Um, then we talked about flow control, 
uh, and how TCP performs flow control easily by using the parameter, which is receiver window. And as we said, flow control is always easy because the one that you are trying to avoid overwhelming is actually the, 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 the end application on the other side. So the end application can always send you back the receiver window and you can make sure that you don't actually increase the transmission rate over that receiver window, so that's easy. Uh, congestion control is, is, is very problematic. Why? Because the, for you, the, the network is a black box. And not only that, you are not the only one who is sending through this network. There are millions of other people are trying to send. So that the state of the network is actually changing dynamically in real time. So the state of the, of the buffer of every router along the path changes dynamically over time. And you have no way to expect how it would look like at certain times of the day. So that's what makes congestion control really problematic, right? And that's why we have to make certain assumptions and we have to get some implicit indications that will give us some idea whether there is traffic jams or not. Maybe? طيب. Very bad, eh? very, uh, uh, this is a very important takeaway message that we'll, we will take with us in the next chapter. The TCP IP stack is based on pushing the complexity, okay, towards the edge. So TCP performs a lot of functionality from the end application point of view. It has to perform reliability end-to-end. -end. It has to perform uh, uh, flow control end-to-end. -end. It has to perform congestion control end-to-end. -end. Okay? Why am I doing this? In order to keep IP as simple as possible. Okay? So the TCP IP stack is based on the fact that we push the complexity to the edge and keep the core network simple. This is a very important message now. Okay? Why? Because we want to make the core network scalable. So push the complexity to the edges. Meshi? Because at the edge, TCP itself deals with how many connections? One, two, ten, hundred? Big deal. Okay, so I can, it's, the complexity is not high. So even though TCP performs uh, reliability, flow control, congestion control, and we, we talked about the techniques, they are fairly complex, huh? but it does that, it does that for how many connections per host? 100, 200, still doable. Huh? Let's uh, put our eyes inside the network and see, مثلا, how many connections the router deals with. Potentially millions. صح? Potentially millions. So imagine that if the router has to provide pair connection behavior. Well, good luck. يعني, صح? يعني if the router tries مثلا assume مثلا the router tries to allocate the buffer per connection that it's coming from a specific end application point to another specific end application point very يعني not scalable it's not scalable you cannot scale because here we're talking about potentially millions of connections that's why that's why really the mindset based on which TCP IP was designed dominated. It actually kicked out all the other يعني, architectures because of this simple idea that we push the complexity to the edges, keep the network core as simple as possible. So that's a very important takeaway message. Very important. Maybe? Type. So we'll talk about that. Eh? So in the layer, so in chapter four, we'll talk about the network layer. So first, we'll try to. Eh? So the goals here is to talk about the network layer service models. Of course, we have to define, يعني, what the network uh, layer deals with. So here, the network layer, layer 
facilitates communication between ايه بقى؟ او وان نتورك تو نتورك وان لوكال نتورك صح اللي انت قلته صح هوست تو هوست اور نتورك تو نتورك كوميونيكيشن نوت اند ابلكيشن بقى خالص ماشي هوست تو هوست اور نتورك تو نتورك طيب سو ويل توك اباوت نتورك لاير سيرفيسز سيرفيس مودلز ويل توك اباوت ذا فوروردنج فيرسز راوتنج بيزيكلي ويل ويل سي ذا ديفرنس بتوين What routing is and what packet forwarding is. We talked about these. These two are simple, and we 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 should have discussed this with network one. So we'll go quickly through these things. So these are not new. So how a router works. We'll talk about the principles of uh, packet forwarding inside the router, and then we'll dive back into the router in terms of computer architecture. So we'll talk about. The, the components inside the router, how the router actually perform physically, but how the router physically performs this routing from inside. We'll, we'll, we'll take a deep dive here inside the router, and we'll talk about how the router switch fabric uh, looks like, where is the brain, the routing is performed where, where is the hardware, where is the software, how do they interact, things like that. So we'll, it will be like sort of a, a crash uh, computer architecture course. Then we'll talk about routing and path selection. Routing and path selection here is, is totally different from what we have studied in Network 1 or Network 2. So in Network 1, we, we just got some idea about the fact that there is something called dynamic routing protocol. So we talked about dynamic routing protocols. We did not study the details of this. Then in, in, in Network 2, we talked to you about uh, uh, different routing protocols like OSPF, RIP, EIJRP, things like that. Again, from a protocol point of view, not from the analysis point of view. What is the complexity of each one? What is the technique used by each one? So here we'll start to talk about the algorithm. So we'll talk about the two major algorithms for routing, Loma Bissamum, Loa, Dijkstra, and Billman Ford. So we'll talk about each one of them. How does each one work? And then we'll be able to analyze the complexity of each one. And what are the pros and cons for each one? Meshi? So we'll not focus here on the on the protocols per se. We'll focus on the techniques, the algorithms. Finally, we'll talk about the um, uh, the broadcast and multicast uh, in the internet, which is also an interesting thing because most of the uh, many many applications actually they require the the use of multicast uh, as a communication paradigm because in many applications you need one to uh, uh, many. Communication, like for example, video conferencing. You need one to many communications. So, uh, how multicast is performed inside the internet? So, we'll talk about these uh, uh, these goals one by one. So, as an introduction, we know that uh, the, the network layer it facilitates the communication between host to host or network to network. So if I have I have one local network here and I have another remote network. So this is a remote network and this is a local network. So either there is a host and host here and I, and I, I need to provide the communication between them or I can actually summarize the communication between all these two networks. We'll see how we summarize all the IPs of all the hosts in the network to facilitate the... And when I say... This communication means that I need to do routing. Routing, routing here talks about establishing a route, a path, okay, where these packets. Here, we we'll start talk about packets. In the transport layer, we talked about segments. Here, we we'll talk about packets. Packets are a segment plus the IP header, okay. And we need to establish a path. So if I uh, if I tell you okay so you, you get to know you need to, you need to go from your house to QU okay you have multiple routes to to to, to get to QU you have multiple ways you can reach to so which one is more efficient that's what routing cares about so along this path there are multiple routers 
So I keep explaining to my students that router is nothing but, you know, when, when, you, when you drive from your house to QU, you get to an intersection or roundabout. So think about the router as a person who is standing at this uh, uh, roundabout or intersection. So you get to that intersection and then you ask that person, how do I, I go to QU? So he would tell you, go left, go right, go straight, things like that. So that's what the router does, basically. So what the router does, technically, is local packet forward. So, so local packet forwarding to facilitate the routing end-to-end. -end. So router, rout, routing cares about the path end-to-end. -end. And packet forwarding, which is the local decision at each individual router, to go in, in specific direction along that route, end to end. Maybe? Why we're saying this? Because packet forwarding, based on packet forwarding, you may actually perform uh, wrong decisions, which what will lead to a to packet loops. So if, if, if packet forwarding is not done correctly, you may get into packet loops. Okay? So, forwarding here is to move packets from a router's input to appropriate router output, basically. So, and we'll see that, as we said, we'll deep dive inside the router to see how this is performed physically inside the router. But routing is to determine the route taken by the packets from one host to another host or from net network to network, the whole path. So we, we talked about the, 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 the analogy for, for, uh, for routing. We process a planning for a trip from source to destination. So this is, this is routing. And our packet forwarding is to, a, is to know exactly at, at every intersection or roundabout or something like that, which direction you should take. This is a local decision that would hopefully allow you to reach to the final goal, but not necessarily. So... So this is the interplay between routing and packet forward. So, by, so basically, uh, um, I rely first and foremost on the this is the decision IP address in the packet. So the decision IP in the packet, I use that to perform the, the, the routing algorithm. And then from the routing algorithm, I create what we call the, the routing table. We call it routing table, but it's actually used for packet forward. So based on this destination address, which is here, that this router will have to, to exit the packet to interface two. So this interface two hopefully will lead to the final destination, hopefully. So, so this is basically the difference between routing and packet. So routing, as we said, is to establish the path end to end. By end to end here, we mean host to host or network to network. And packet forwarding cares about the local decision, which hopefully will lead to end to end path. So in terms of network layer services, there are two paradigms that, uh, 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 that characterize the network layer services. We have the virtual circuit and we have the datagram networks. And we talked about this before, if you remember. We talked about this multiple times. We talked about this from the data link layer point of view when we, when we talked about uh, 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 circuit switching and packet switching. So when you say the word switching, this refers to physical. Machine. So here, when we talk about the network layer, we refer to virtual circuit. The difference between the two is, is, is in the fact that, because of the fact that in the data link layer, we talk about physical node-to-node -node communication, صح? Node-to-node communication, physically, صح? Whether they are connected with a line or we're connected with a cable or wireless, we talk about physical connection end to end. That's why we call it a circuit switching. By circuit switching, we establish a physical circuit for a particular call end-to-end. -end. We establish a physical circuit. 
in the network layer, we talk about virtual circuit because it's, it's actually, we don't build a physical circuit here. We build a logical circuit, a virtual circuit. But again, there is, there is a big of overlap. So by virtual circuit, we mean that we establish an end-to-end -end virtual circuit between the host and host. Meshi? And by virtual circuit, we mean what? We mean that we have a specific bandwidth reserved on every link along the path. And not only that, specific router buffer size reserved for this virtual circuit. So that this is what we mean by virtual circuit. So, in other words, if we take a look at the at the, at the router in that in that uh, service paradigm, low virtual circuit, the router will have millions of these virtual circuits, and it has to maintain and manage all the states of all these virtual circuits. So we'll 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 see that visually. So. The, 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 the virtual circuit, this is very similar to uh, connection-oriented and connectionless, Maybe. except that connection, when you say connection-oriented or connectionless, this is a end application to end application, end-to-end yeah. -end between two applications. Maybe. We establish a connection between them, and both of them, they have to agree. And then after this, we, we start the communication. Similarly, for, for the case of virtual circuit, we have to establish a virtual circuit. But here, by the virtual circuit is not only end to end. It has to go through all the routers. And all the routers have to reserve something along the path. So we'll see how this is done visually. So similar to the, the, the connection oriented, the virtual circuit network provides network layer connection service. Analogous to the analogous, طبعاً, but see, يعني, there is برضو some differences here. Here, the service is host to host, ماشي? and the network provides only one or another. يعني إحنا ما ما عندناش هنا فرصة إن إحنا نبقى connection oriented and 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 يعني حاجة in between. لا هنا it has to be clear either virtual circuit or datagram. ما فيش there's there's nothing in between. And the implementation is in, in, in the core network. And basically, when we talk about the core network, as we will uh, uh, try to discuss, if the core network is based on virtual circuit, the complexity is, is really not scalable. The complexity is really high. And as we will see, it's not going to be scalable. Khalos. Because the virtual circuit dictates the fact that you have to maintain a state for each virtual circuit, which we will talk about, and maintaining this state for millions of connections, for millions of virtual circuits, it's not going to be scalable, and the complexity is exponential. Okay, so it was it, it was maybe a choice in the past when the internet was really simple. The topology was was يعني يعني we had, مثلاً, let's say one million, مثلاً, uh, nodes over the internet. But technically now we're talking about billions. Okay, so that's not a choice. If it was a choice like a couple of decades ago, so a couple of decades ago, we used to talk about ATM and other friendly and other uh, 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 protocols. But later on, because of the lack of, of, of scalability, they all lost ground to IP because IP, again, kept the, the, the complexity at the edges and maintained a very, very low complexity at the core. So in virtual circuits, we talk about source the destination path behaves much like telephone circuits, although in the telephone circuit, we, we talk about a physical circuit. Because we talk about switches, and physical, could have physical network nodes, and we establish a physical circuit end to end. If you have, if, you didn't leave these days when we had the uh, landlines and we have switches. So the public switch telephone network, whenever you establish a call, you have to, uh, to create a physical circuit between all the switches all the way to the final destination. With trunks, 
اوكي؟ ات ووز هارد طبعا. So we, we used to hear that voice a lot when we were young. All circuits are busy now. Please call again later. نقعد بقى نستنى ساعتين لغاية ما إيه؟ ما السيركتس كلها تفضى وبعد كده نتكلم ونصلي. Because we had to eat, to have a physical circuit in uh, Now we talk about in the internet we talk about the uh, virtual circuits. So that service paradigm was used by ATM, Frame Relay, and, and different types of uh, network layer and actually data link layer protocols um, uses uses this virtual circuits uh, uh, paradigm. But again, because of the lack of scalability, they all went away and also and only IP survived. So basically the in, in virtual circuits we have to, to maintain or we have to do call setup and tear down. So for each virtual for each virtual circuit I have to first I have to perform call setup. So the, the, the host or the entry router may establish a call setup it will send a request to the destination router or to the destination host, ماشي? And this call setup will go through all the routers, all the intermediate routers. All these routers, they will say, do I have resources to commit to this virtual circuit? Yes, okay, so it, it sends the request to the other. Do I have resources? Yes, 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 yes. So it goes all the way to the A, to the final route. And then the final router says, oh, okay. So it seems everyone is, is agreeing So it sends back a confirmation saying, okay, let's commit all these resources and all of them they say, okay, so I booked, I booked this buffer size for this virtual circuit, I booked this length bandwidth for the virtual circuit, all the resources are booked. This process, as you can imagine, takes sometimes hundreds of milliseconds. So that's a big overhead. So not only that, I have to maintain a state, a state, a يعني set of parameters for this virtual circuit, that this virtual circuit uses this amount of bandwidth, uses this amount of buffer size. I have to maintain this state for every single virtual circuit. Type. <coughs> so I have to have some call management, call setup and, and tear down. I have to maintain a state. Each packet, it does not, we don't deal with IP addresses here. We don't deal with IP addresses. We deal with virtual circuit identifier. حاجة مختلفة خالص عن اللي احنا تعلمنا. We have virtual circuit ID. And the virtual circuit here refers to a specific virtual circuit between one host and another destination host or one router and another destination router. And you can have 10 virtual circuits from the same router to the same route or from the same host to the same host. You can have 10 virtual circuits established. So imagine the amount of virtual circuits that you have to maintain at the core network level. Potentially billions. Nowadays, it's impossible. It's impossible to do that nowadays. Um, every router on the source destination path maintains a state. This is very important. So one, we have to have virtual circuit management called setup and tear down. So that's one. Two, I have to maintain a state. And the state here says, okay, so I have this amount of buffer size. I have this amount of band link bandwidth. Commits everything. The good thing about this is that, as you can imagine, if I, if I do this process, the communication will happen smooth after that. Sah? Sah? Because all the resources are booked. So all the resources are booked. Meshi? Everything is guaranteed. So the quality of service is guaranteed in that case. So I don't anticipate that, مثلا, if I have an application like multimedia, مثلا, I don't anticipate any مثلا, pauses in the video because everything is, is booked. So? Meshi? But the problem is, تخيل بقى معايا سيناريو مثلا. I called someone, I establish a virtual circuit. صح؟ I establish a virtual end, end to end. ماشي؟ And then I left the headset and I went away. I'm not saying anything. I'm not يعني I'm not actually saying anything. 
So I reserved all this amount of resources and I'm not using them, صح? So the, it's not used. But the virtual circuit is still there. And you have no way to figure out whether this virtual circuit is actually used or not. So in, in other words, virtual circuits usually use what we call over-provision. يعني basically, you have to reserve based on the worst case scenario. ماشي؟ هو بقى يعني he, he did not use these resources fine but I have to eh, to, to, to reserve based on the worst case scenario ماشي؟ is this sufficient? of course not because يعني you, يعني at some point يعني it, it actually كمان has implicit assumption that the application will have deterministic bandwidth usage who said that? who said that? every application uses different dynamic bandwidth and uses different transmission rates imagine but you have to a to reserve resources based on the worst case to guarantee some a, a, a quality of service along the virtual circuit because again if you want to change then you have to tear down the virtual circuit and establish another one which is very expensive so you have to a to reserve based on the worst case which is really a Uh, hard and not efficient. Meshi? So, <clears throat> so the dedicated resources have to have some kind of predictable services. Uh, th this is what I'm talking about. So, the application has to have some predictable service. But very, uh, 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 yani most of the applications that we have nowadays is not really predictable. is not really predictable. يعني when you watch when you watch a movie مثلا on demand video, can you predict مثلا ال, ال, how much bandwidth you need? You don't know. It may actually go up and down depending on the video and the video quality goes up and down. So the service does not have any predictable uh, uh, requirements. So how can I how can I reserve in that case? So I have to resort I have to opt to what we call a over provision. I have to find the best case scenario or the worst, sorry, the worst case scenario and reserve the virtual circuit based on that, which is not efficient. So a virtual circuit is uh, uh, composed of a path from a source to destination. Fadali. Oof, oh, sorry. Like for the virtual circuit implementation, as we said, each path from the source to the destination will get assigned a virtual circuit. And as we said, technically, we can establish these virtual circuits even from the same source to the same destination. We may have multiple virtual circuits. Uh, the virtual circuit numbers, they refer to a combination of host to host or network to network. One number for each link along the path. So the virtual circuit will, ha will, will get assigned, the virtual circuit numbers will get assigned to one uh, 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 circuit end to end. And then these virtual circuits will get inserted into the forwarding table. Unlike by routing tables, IP address, destination IP address, no, here we'll use by a virtual circuit number in the forwarding table instead of by IP address. Packets, packets, the incoming packets that belong to the, to the specific virtual circuit will go or will encounter certain behavior in terms of going to a specific output port from the, from the router. Meshi? So virtual circuit number can be changed on each link. Now, this is very important. The virtual circuit refers to the end-to-end, right? The end-to-end connection. But the virtual circuit number gets assigned locally. It sounds strange, صح? لأنه أصلاً مفروض technically the virtual circuit number refers to an end-to-end, صح? End-to-end virtual circuit, صح? But the virtual circuit number gets assigned at every link, which means that the virtual circuit number would change at each hub, and that. seems to be strange given the fact that we need to establish virtual circuit end to end so it makes sense that we have one 
virtual circuit number for the end to end virtual circuit, صح? That makes sense, صح? But we don't do this. The new virtual circuit number comes from the forwarding table. So how this is done? <coughs> so here we have this virtual circuit. This virtual circuit uh, 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 represents the communication between this host and this destination host. And it goes through three links, right? So this red, this red one here is one virtual circuit. But we will see that, we see that the virtual circuit number here is 12, and here is 22, and here is 32. So at each link we get, we assign different virtual circuit, although all of them, they belong to the same virtual circuit end to end. So this will make the forwarding table in the router to look like this. So from the incoming interface, this virtual circuit number, it needs to be forwarded to that interface, and in the output interface, the virtual circuit number will change to 22 instead of 12. And this router will, will have another forwarding table according to this. Okay, which we will have that, which will have this virtual circuit number as the input, as the incoming virtual circuit number, and so on. In addition to what, what does not exist in this forwarding table is the state here. Here, there's supposed to be the state of this virtual circuit because the router does not only maintain the, the, uh, uh, the input port and the output port, it also maintains the state. And the state by is a is, is set of parameters that characterize this virtual circuit in terms of buffer size, link bandwidth, and everything. That's missing here, but it has to be maintained. Just try to imagine Ba'a, how many combinations would we have in terms of virtual circuit on the internet uh, at a core router. Especially if we're talking about applications now and nowadays, potentially this, uh, this uh, forwarding table may get to billions of entries, billions of entries. And not only that, maintaining and managing the states is highly complex. I have to, a, I have to book and reserve specific amount of the of the router buffer size for each of these at the circuit level and that's very complex so in terms of scalability this is not scalable so in addition to this routers maintain connection state information which is very very hard to manage and again again it's not only that it's not only hard to manage but it's based on over provisioning and reserving these resources will not guarantee that it will be utilized. So I'm doing all of this, and at the end it's not used efficiently, and it's increasing the complexity. Imagine? So that's, uh, so going back here, why, why do we allocate the virtual circuits locally, or they change at every link? Even though all of these virtual circuits, they actually belong to the same virtual circuit end to end. The answer to this is each router allocates these virtual circuits locally. Allocates the numbers, allocates the numbers for these virtual circuits locally. Because if we want to allocate one unique virtual circuit for each one end-to-end, that's, it's, it's next to impossible, Leba. Because this means that all the routers, they have to globally agree on a unique number for this virtual circuit end to end. Can you imagine how hard this is? So in the design, they realize that we don't need to do that. We don't need to have a unique virtual circuit number which is globally unique. We don't have to do that. As long as we maintain in the forwarding table the incoming and the outgoing virtual circuit number, I can then allow each router to allocate these numbers locally without having to have 
a condition that this virtual circuit number needs to be unique globally. Naji? So that's an engineering decision which made this problem rather simple. Yeah, it's not complex, but say, yeah, it made it a little bit uh, 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 realistic. Because maintaining a unique virtual circuit number globally, this requires agreement between all the routers. And that's not possible. And that's not, not possible. Yeah, for example, one can say, type, this, this virtual circuit number needs to be unique. Yeah, I mean, if this is 12, this has to be 12, and this has to be 12. Right? Yeah, let's assume, for okay, we need to have the same virtual circuit number for the end-to-end -end virtual circuit. Type, who will decide this? We need to have an agreement between the router. Type, no, it's not possible. Maybe one will say, okay, well, it's okay. The sender will decide. صح? The sender, this sender will decide on the virtual circuit number. So if it decides that this will be 12, at the call setup, I have to make sure along the path that this 12 is booked at every router. ماشي? طب, this one selected 12. So who said, who, who, who said that this one will not select 12? يعني, who will prevent any other host from coming up with the same number? And what will happen if you have collision between these numbers? Maybe? It will be very hard. So this is an engineering design. I mean, when you think about all these details, then you take an engineering decision that, okay, so I don't have to have a global uniqueness for these virtual numbers. I can have local significance, and as long as I can maintain the incoming virtual circuit number and the outgoing, Okay, I can allocate these locally at every router. And technically, can I do it Can I connect this to this? Okay, can I do a logical connection between this and this? But this is what the virtual circuit is all about. <coughs> so I achieve the same end result without having to restrict a global uniqueness of the virtual circuit. And that's, that, that, that's more efficient. What's not more efficient is maintaining the states and all these other things that we talked about. the virtual circuits, they don't have a global unique number. Maybe? Type. Yeah, first of all, I, I commend you for observing this. That's good. And as we said, لا, هما, as you can see, from the same, from the same uh, uh, input, input interface to the same, maybe, to the same output interface, I can have multiple virtual circuits. Okay? Whether these are coming from the same application or from different applications, as we said, we can have multiple virtual circuits even between two networks. I can do that. And actually, this is one of the problems that this will lead to potentially millions of these virtual circuits to be maintained, okay, and the state for each one will be maintained inside the router, and that's that's highly complex. But that doesn't mean that they are not the same set, they are different cir circuits because these are logical virtual circuits, it's not physical, even though they are between the same input interface and the same output interface, but these are different logical virtual circuits. Did I answer the question? Uh, I, I was just wondering if, like... But some are different numbers, right? Yeah. Here yeah, the numbers are different. The numbers are different. They are different virtual circuits, but different logical virtual circuits. But between the same interface incoming and outgoing, maybe the same host and destination, end to end. They have, they have multiple virtual circuits, but they have different virtual circuit numbers. And in the forwarding table, this means that I'm connecting this to this. This is the same virtual circuit. What? 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 Okay. Uh 
هو بقى allocation of these resources is another بقى problem this is a big big problem بقى how you allocate whether بقى you allocate them based on maximum utilization you allocate them based on fairness you allocate them based on different applications this is multimedia ده 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 science بقى ده ده في research كبير جدا ماشي بس هو again the mindset of doing resource allocation for virtual circuit paradigm will be totally different from ال data gram will be totally different يعني for data gram زي ما هنتكلم different packets may go to different routes there is no virtual circuit uh, يعني establishment whatsoever the routing here is much simpler the routing is basic is basically based only on the destination address I don't care where it's coming from I don't care which router is next all I care about is the final destination I don't have to maintain the states or كل ده I don't have to do this. Nishi? Uh, specific one or... لا, 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 لا. Multiple. Multiple. Yeah, technically, different virtual circuit numbers. You can technically have as many virtual circuits as you want from the same node to the same node or from the same network to the same network. Nothing would stop you from doing this. Yeah, I can technically have something like this. كده 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 can have as many connections as I want نعم اه this is routing بقى ممكن اعمل virtual circuit كده انا حر يعني I will I will adjust the routing table inside these routers to have this routing this is routing routing it talks about establishing path end to end But it's from the same host to the same destination, but different virtual circuits. Whether these virtual circuits they are going through the same path, different path, it doesn't matter. But the problem is maintaining these states at every single route. This is the problem here. So ah, aywa, great, aywa, fundali. Type in terms of stages here, I have first I have I have a signaling. I have to have like some signaling overhead. In the in the virtual circuit uh, uh, service paradigm, because I have to first establish the virtual circuit using some code setup, and when I finish, I have to do some tear down. So, طبعاً some uh, uh, protocols are using this concept like ATM, like X25. Again, these are all gone. All all of them are gone. Nobody uses them. Nobody talks about them. Imagine. So the call initiation or the call setup, the sender or the, 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 the start entity will send a call initiation or initiate the call. This will go through these setup, uh, sorry, through these routers. When a router receives this, it will have the requirement for this application. Based on this requirement, it would say, okay, so based on the state of the, of the buffer, based on the state of the bandwidth of the next link and so on and so forth, I need to have a state which says I need to guarantee this amount of buffer size, I need to guarantee this amount of throughput for the upcoming link and so on. It, it needs to reserve all these resources. But it, it, will, it will first identify these resources, but not commit them. Alpha Z database killer. First, I need to identify, I need to do some reservation. Okay? When do they commit when the call accept comes back? When the call accept comes back from the destination, okay, it goes back to the to the routers, and then the routers they will say, okay, so now I can commit the resources. Committing the resources, ma'na khalas. I guarantee nobody else can use these resources except this virtual circuit. So this call setup and 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 accept and so on, this establishes the the virtual circuit for the first time, and that, as you can imagine, it takes a a pretty long time. Imagine that this is done billions of these virtual circuits to be established over the internet. Then and only then, I can talk about a data flow. So once I do this, supposedly the data flow will go smooth because all the all the resources are already committed and everything. So everything will go smooth. But this signaling is a big overhead that I have to do at the beginning. Uh, Alternatively, I can use datagram networks. Datagram networks, or which is used by IP, no call setup, no call teardown, nothing. 
you want to send a packet, just send it. Uh, and routers, they also maintain no state. All they do is that they read the destination IP from the, only the destination IP from the packet. And based on that, they perform the packet forwarding. That's it. Okay? So, so some packets may actually get to different routes at any point of time because of the fact that there is no virtual circuit established. Okay? So in most of the time, if, 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 uh, if I'm sending to the same destination address, supposedly I will, يعني, most probably, get through the same route. But that's not guaranteed. There's no guarantee that this will happen. I cannot guarantee this, ماشي? because I don't have any virtual circuit established. So packet forwarded using only the destination host address, only. Or طبعاً, يعني destination معناها we can, we can route to a network, as we will see. So packets between the same source and the same destination may take different routes. Because there is no virtual circuit established. So uh, first of all, the router does not read the, the, the source address in any way. It doesn't care where it's coming from. All it needs to read is just the destination address. Okay? Because of the fact that you do local forwarding, different packets may take different path. So there's no guarantee that they will go through the same end-to-end. -end. So that's how, how it works. So if you have 4 billion IP addresses, 4 billion game name, around 4 billion, the, the, the size of the IP address is A. What can you mean the size of the IP address? version 4. Bas version. Ah, Lee Max Melokam, how many bits? Hey? Four? Four, 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 love my camp type. Four, four. Eh? Four, four, or cool, cool, Rakam fill IP, who are four? How many bits are that? IP address, how many bits are there? Well, there is four, so it's at the maximum protein. It's about 56. Yes, it's about 56. How many bits? 256. No, no, no. The maximum number is 256. How many bits do I need to represent 256 as a number? يعني log 2 of 256 8 صح؟ if I have 4 8s that's A32 2 to the power 32 equals 4 billion عرفنا يجيت منين يعني؟ ماشي؟ يعني if I have 32 bits of IP address I can have a combination of 4, uh, 4 billion IP addresses on the internet this is the طبعا in network one, but I can't tell you that technically on the internet, we definitely have more than four billion. So, if we have a lot of people who are in the network, we can't tell you that. But if we have a lot of people who are in the network, we can't But anyway, so, so here, definitely, in order to simplify, I don't need to uh, 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 have the uh, addresses here as individual host addresses. As we said, we don't need to do that. صح? And this will make the forwarding even simpler. And that will lead to more scalability, which is good. So here, we can have a range of IPs. Okay? This range of IPs may refer to a local network. All the hosts in one network. And that's why we say network layer facilitates communication between one network and another network, okay? Because in the, in the routing table, we actually maintain technically the range of A of IPs. So this range of IPs refer to one full network, which may have thousands of hosts. Imagine. 
So I can route to a full network which, is, which has thousands of hosts technically. When I reach to the destination network, how do I get to the particular host? I'm really surprised that he's. Uh... <laughs> so, really, so that's what happened. So, uh, I, I actually send it to the network. And then I rely on the data link layer at the Mac level to deliver it physically to the host, which what we discussed in network one. We, we send the letter to the house, okay, okay? And then inside the house, we say, bah, who's, who's this letter is for? Am, okay, deliver it to Am. And this name is the physical address or the Mac address, okay? So either we deliver it to the host using the unique IP address of that host, or we can deliver it to the house. And inside that house there, we can use the MAC address as the name of the person that this letter is for. Okay? Yeah, and eventually it will get there. But whether it gets there on two steps, or it gets there using the IP, either way. So in the, in the, in the forwarding table, or in the routing table, we can maintain actually ranges of IPs. So this range of IPs as the destination addresses can go to this output link. So imagine here by the difference for that. Instead of having billions and billions of these virtual circuits, each virtual circuit will refer to one virtual circuit between one host and one destination. Imagine the combination that you can have. Here, instead of doing this, here all I care about is that it's, it's going to this you know, set of hosts without caring about the, the source network at all. Uh, can you see the, the difference in terms of scalability and the number of combinations? The, يعني, the, the difference is huge, is huge. Because if I talk about billions of, of potential sources and billions of potential destinations, and I tell you, what is the combination of virtual circuits you can have between these two? It will become like in the Terra يعني, uh, range. Okay? Versus if I tell you, I don't care about where it's coming from. All I care about is the destination, which bus is destination host by destination network. Okay? طبعاً, the difference is huge in terms of complexity, in terms of scalability, is huge. But the cost here, I don't have any virtual circuit. I don't guarantee that the, the route end-to-end -end. packets may get lost. Packets may take different routes. That's the either cost that I have to pay for scalability. As an example, <clears throat> here in this forwarding table, I have a range, this range of IPs, which may refer to one network. All the hosts in one network if it's going to any address in this range, I will send it to link interface zero. If, if, if the destination address is within this range, I will send it to one and so on. طبعاً أصبحت the routing table, in terms of number of columns, it's less. In terms of number of rows, it's much, much, much less. ماشي؟ طبعاً in terms of scalability, this is highly scalable. مش بس كده كمان, I say otherwise. Otherwise, دي اللي هي إيه؟ Let me submit default route. Meshi? This default route means that I will send this to interface 3, which will go to the default router to go to the internet. And then, God will give us a gift. So, that's what we call it default route. So, see, in this four rows, or five rows, I can have يعني, all the routing combinations that I need. Four rows. Two different columns, that's it. Very simple. And it's meant to be this way. routing table, we cannot have range together. How do we how do you specify the range in the routing table? Broadcast address. 
لا 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 we we put in the entry we put the common part so here for example we see that we see the the difference between this address and this address we see that they are common up to here ايه لو سبنت لو سبنت ادرس مش سبنت ماسك سبنت ماسك اللي هو بيبقى كله وحيد وصفار اوكي سو ذس از اكشلي سلاش كام 8 و8 و4 صح 8 و8 16 و4 ذس از سلاش 20 ولا سلاش 20 كام اه سلاش 20 ماشي انا اكشلي لغايه هنا كمان سو سلاش 21 صح الصفر ده برضه كومن <تصفيق> ايه لا و ذس ذس زيرو از از كومن صح سو 8 8 5 لا احنا بنشوف احنا بنشوف وات ار ذا ديجيتس ذات ار كومن ان اول ذس رينج اه كلهم So it seems it seems in this part is common between all of them. So I'm changing only this part. This part it changes, صح? Which means I refer to this range of IPs using what we call the subnet address. Per each link. Per each row. For each row, I put the subnet address. بقول كده this subnet address slash twenty one. معناها the first twenty one. Binary digits are common in this network, and here it seems all the way up to here. So this is this part is common, صح? And this is slash twenty four, صح? Here up to here is common, and this is also slash twenty one. So this this will be the common part slash twenty one. But this subnet address is different from this so that's definitely a different network مش معنى ان both are slash 21 they, they, they refer to the same network ماشي ما فيش لا ما تقوليش broadcast بس مش مش لا اسمه اسمه, اسمه subnet mask اه ذا برودكاست ادريس اه فهمت اه ذا برودكاست ادريس ويل بي ان انا اخد الجزء ده واحطه كله وانز yeah. ايوه ايوه صح يعني ده كده برودكاست ادريس تكنيكلي صح ذس لاست وان از كولد برودكاست ادريس صح ده اللي درسناه يعني في نتورك 1 بس ان اني كيس هير اي كان هاف ا رينج اوف اي بيز اند اي كان يوز اونلي وان ادريس تو ريبريزنت ذس رينج ذاتس ذا كي ثينج ماشي. So this allowed me to also simplify the routing table even more. Using one entry, I can refer to a range of IPs. So anything that goes to this range of IPs, I will send it to this interface. It's one behavior for for this entire network, which increases the scalability really high. ماشي. So imagine if we have uh, this is the last slide. Can you know So so when we're looking for the forwarding table entry like this, there is a rule that we have also also discussed in, uh, in in network one. That using using an incoming, يعني طبعا أنا router receives a packet from the in, for, receives a packet on a specific interface. I don't care what source interface is coming is coming from. I don't care. ماشي؟ All I need to do is just to look at the destination address in the packet. نرسمها كده. So a router has a packet coming in. All it needs to read is a field here called destination address. This destination address contains a unique IP address. A full IP address. ماشي؟ So this IP address looks like this. So all I need to do is just to say, okay, so here it seems that this one is slash 21, and this one is slash 21, and this one is slash 24. So I will take each of these ones and I will try to match it with here. Okay? So this destination address clearly matches with 
zero one two three zero zero بس the default is three matches with everything ماشي يعني three اللي هو otherwise ماشي matches with everything يعني معناها إذا إذا if it does not match any of these يبقى I will put it to three طيب so it matches with zero so the answer here which interface zero صح the second one let's see بقى the second one matches with which one two طيب why not one <clears throat> Does it match with one? Ah, uh, it matches with both. Which one do we select? Here, about the rule is a, the rule which we discussed in network one. It's not new, yeah. We select the one with the longest match. Agree? We select the one. Hey, about use the longest match. Do we select the the one which is slash twenty one or the slash twenty four? We select the one with slash 21, 24, sorry. They are longest. So 24, they are the one. I will send it to A to interface one. Huh? Ah, no. Three? لا it does يعني مثلا لو انا حطيت لك لو انا حطيت لك destination address it does not match with this it does not match with يعني مثلا لو حطيت لك destination address that looks like this does it match with the zero no does it match with this one no does it match with this one no خلاص يبقى the only thing is three اها لا هي other otherwise does not have a subnet address does not have a specific subnet address and usually this is slash zero slash zero معناها it matches with everything بس slash zero برضو معناها ايه معناها if there is any other match it will have a long longest match more than this one so this one matches only if there is no other match صح But if the, if you have only one single match other than this, then you have to go with that, because this will have a longer match. ماشي كده خلاص. So that's that's basically it. فاحنا نوقف هنا بقى. طبعا this is the يعني the the difference between the two. We talked about that. فاحنا نوقف هنا and next time بقى we start to talk about. طبعا from now on خلاص there's no virtual circuit anymore. احنا بس we talked about virtual circuit. To motivate the fact that virtual circuit is not scalable, so we cannot use it for the internet because one of the requirements of the internet it has to be highly scalable. So from now on, we'll start to focus على بقية على IP. We we'll talk about the IP in terms of uh, uh, the header format and in terms of the services and in terms of routing, and then we'll talk about multicast and broadcast as we said. Any questions?